So CJ, just start with this year for you. Some great moments early, maybe, you know, little, I won't say struggles, but not as much in the middle, then obviously really bounced back this past week. So just sort of take me through the highs and lows of the year for you. You know, I definitely had some highs and some lows. You know, I started the season off, you know, strong uh, against Penn State, didn't play too well against Duquesne, then, you know, I have a great game against Pitt, then I go in this stretch where I'm just not being very productive for the football team. And, you know, last week I just had to go back to the basics, what made me very productive, which was just running the football, running the football hard, and just getting downhill fast. That's just my two things that I have to do. I have to be a tough tackle and run the ball very hard. Is, it, is that it? I mean, you know, when, when you had the struggles, did you think it was you didn't run as hard as you did this past week in some of those other games? And, and what, what brought you back to that this past week? Uh, reality. <laughs> that understanding you have to be productive, uh, you know, it's definitely a sport that you, you know you love to play, but in the end of the day, it's always go down to business, and I wasn't being productive. What were the coaches saying to you in terms of the last couple of weeks especially? Because they talked a lot about you needing to get going and maybe you're not running as hard, but Neil actually talked after the game that he felt this past week was one of your better weeks of practice. Yeah, definitely. Uh, just a preparation part. Uh, within Tuesday throughout uh, Friday, you know, just taking uh, every detail in, being very, uh, how should I say this, being paying attention to every single detail that goes on within practice, like taking game like reps, like Coach Scott said, just not out there practicing the practice, but practicing knowing that, like, this can actually be a look in the game on Saturday. CJ, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is it as simple as just not not thinking too much sometimes, just going out there and doing it? Yeah, definitely that. Just go play football. Like, it's something I do for fun. And when it becomes a job, that's when, you know, that's when you start to overthink. I just have to go out there and play free, like Coach Scott said. So 15 games or so as a running back here. There's still things you're learning as, as you go? And what are they? Definitely, definitely a lot of things I'm still learning, you know. As, if I'm not learning, that's a bad thing, you know. There's always improvement and, you know, to grow within this uh, running back position. But I wouldn't really get too in-depth on what we're learning, you know. They're still out there listening. <laughs> what was the hardest thing for you to learn to begin with? I mean, eye discipline, looking for things. What, what, what was something that initially maybe you struggled with? Uh, believing that I could break tackles. That's one thing, you, like Coach Scott said, you got to believe that you can break tackles. Once you believe, your mind is a strong muscle. Once you believe something, you can actually put your mind to it and do it. Did you play mad on Saturday? <laughs> it seemed like it. Yeah. I played definitely a little angry, you know, a little mad. It was a great experience, you know, finally playing back in my home state. I haven't played there in almost two years, so, you know, it definitely was a great experience. But I definitely had a, a little edge to me on Saturday. Edge? Yeah. I wouldn't say that. I definitely, you know, I want to perform every uh, each weekend and week out. But you know, it just a different feeling. You know, that smell of just being back home in my home state. Just you know, that extra boost that allows me to you know play how I want to play. You have a lot of family there. Yes, sir. Did you count them at the game? Uh huh. Uh, I think I probably had up to like 20, 25 family members. Probably even more. It was just it was so many of us I couldn't even count. <laughs> Big fan of you getting in the league, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. You know, they, they were talking about you not breaking tackles and not running as hard. Yeah, I suspect come Sunday morning you were just as sore after those games as other games. I mean, does that bother you to hear that? I mean, because I know when you're out there, you're, you're giving all you got, even though others may think you don't. Uh, I wouldn't say it bothered me. It just made me. Uh, have a reality check and understanding that I'm not being productive. Like, I'm on this football team to break tackles and to run the ball hard. And when I'm not doing that, I'm not helping the team out. How does it change things for you with a running quarterback? I mean, last year, you know, when it was, uh, you know, JT, you guys obviously didn't have a mobile quarterback. The whole game plan different? Your style different? How does it change things? Uh, he actually makes my runs easier because <laughs> you have to respect his run game and his ability to throw the ball, too. So, you know, Gary's definitely a dual, dual threat quarterback. I wouldn't just say a running back. Running quarterback, he's a dual threat. You know, he can throw the ball. He can run the ball well. He made great decisions with the ball in his hand, too. So he definitely helped my game out to a different, you know, level with his ability to, you know, throw and run the ball. 
CJ, you seemed like stronger, more, very effective in the fourth quarter. Um, any any reason that was it just the way the game was going? It was hot. It was a compliment of like using you know Jaheim and, and Justin too to kind of I don't know, soften things up for you. It just seemed like it was set up for you to be successful in that fourth quarter. Uh, the team just needed me, you know, to run the ball hard, and as a collective, us eleven that was on the field just needed to run out the clock to win the game. Any back and forth between you and Garrett? See, I can't let a quarterback outrush me. I mean, you're the leading rusher. <laughs> Here's Garrett, number two. You guys ever banter back and forth on that a little bit? <laughs> nah, me and Garrett don't get competitive when it comes to that. As long as we, as long as it said West Virginia with the win, we fine with that. Okay. I got have zero rushing yards as long as we win the game. Okay. <laughs> you're about a year removed from the injury um, on your leg. How long did it take you to mentally be back 100% to where you could fully trust it? Uh, when I could fully trust it. Probably the first day after um, the first day I got cleared, I was just back out there running just to be happy, just have opportunity to be back on the football field. So I definitely trust it. I've been trusting it since since I had the opportunity to get back on the field. So to piggyback off of that, there's there's been maybe a thought that when you were struggling that it was you were running different to avoid maybe getting hurt again. You don't believe that to be the case at all. Like you you don't feel that. It was just all technique. My technique was just off. That's that's the biggest thing I can give you. Can I ask you this: uh, the the ad that they're running now about with the doc, with the doctors that treated you, making that ad. What what kind of memories did that bring back? What uh, what did that mean to you, making that ad? Uh, you know, it was definitely cool. You know, I gotta have an opportunity to you know make a commercial about myself and what I went through. But you know, I have a goldfish memory. I kind of like don't remember it too well. <laughs> No, I try my best not to. <laughs> how good's the offensive line been this year? The offensive line? Yeah, how good have they played? Uh, well, you see our rushing stats recently. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave it to the stats. They've been doing. They've been doing. They've been doing their job. I haven't been doing my job. You guys know you have eleven straight games with 140 plus rushing yards. Uh, we just actually figured that out today. Uh, I think it was in position meeting, and they uh, told us. But we don't really pay too much into that. We worry about more how we play the game rather than the outcome of the stat line. What did you think about how Jaheim ran on Saturday, and especially how contrasted it is with, with you? I've been telling the world, Jaheim White is a special young man. Like He has the ability to do everything when it comes to playing running back. He's fast. He's strong. He's explosive. He can catch well. He can make people miss. He can run you over. He can outrun you. He's just a great athlete. That's the best way I can explain it. I've been seeing this for almost, what, eight, nine months now. <laughs> I had no surprise at that. I'm just happy he finally got his opportunity to showcase it to the world. You kind of had a run like him on that fourth down when you were able to bust it outside. Oh, on the, on the first one, yeah. I got, I got to show a little something off it. You know, I definitely compliment his game, too, because I steal stuff from him, too. It's like we piggyback off each other. Like, I, he steals stuff from me. I steal stuff from him. How do you keep this going? Um, build off the momentum of winning the game last week. You got four tough ones left, and these four can pretty much determine the type of season you have. Uh, consistency within my practice. I had to take the same preparation I did last week, the same intensity, the same focus, the same detail I took last week, but even to a different level because we need these next few games, but we need to win this game first. All right. CJ, on the first drive, fourth and one, going forward in your own territory, when you broke <coughs> off that run, I mean, what did that decision tell you? What did it mean to you to, I guess, have that opportunity early in the game in your own territory? Mm. Well, that whole week, uh, Coach Brown was telling us, you know, shoot your shot. Don't ever be afraid. Believe in yourself. And he believed in me that I was going to get that fourth and one. And I said, thank you, Coach. I'm going to believe in myself, too. And I, you know, went out there and <laughs> had a great run and, you know, kept the chain moving for the team. Neil mentioned that after the game that he kind of told you all that you guys were going to be aggressive against UCF. But what did that mean to you all when the coach says early in the week, hey, we're going to be aggressive come Saturday? That they just believe in us. They saw how we prepared uh, Tuesday through Friday in our preparation. They just trusted us knowing that we was going to you know, <clears throat> come out successful within that game. Get another young Ronnie back in DJ Oliver, big guy, sort of like you. What, what, explain what his game is. How good can he be? I'm going to let the mic drop on that one. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm supposed to be saying this, but DJ Oliver runs 22 miles per hour on the GPS. He's like, 
He's he's not just a big running back. He's a explosive, fast running back. Like that's a tough tackle. He's gonna be he's gonna be a problem when he get his opportunity. He's gonna be a problem. Thanks, CJ. Thank you. Thank you.